Okay, so uh, thanks for watching this video today. Um, I'm going to be looking at the Phantom 3 uh, Professional and I'm going to be conducting a range test. So obviously the range can vary depending on the location. So here uh, you can see, uh, you'll see in a minute, um, especially when we get the, the DJI up in the air, uh, it's very flat, uh, no real structures around. We'll have the mountains in the distance there. and um, It's quite flat, so what I want to look at is how far you can get it in an area like this and then we'll obviously try uh, we'll conduct a similar test in a built up area with houses um, to see what sort of range you can get from the Phantom Shut up! Uh, okay now some places that I read they said you can usually get with the Phantom 3 around 2.2 kilometers, mile and a half so that's what I want to try out today and see if that is uh, a realistic target to hit. Uh, obviously now I did look at some ways you can boost the signal so I'm going to see how they affect uh, the, you know the range and see if that actually does improve it. One of the places I looked at was if you actually put on two CDs to the back of the controller uh, that can help boost the signal so that's something I'm going to try out uh, and see if that actually does work. Um, you can buy signal boosters they're usually around $7.99 on Amazon eBay uh, and they just look like two wee it's pretty much like tinfoil almost to attach onto the aerial so if a couple CDs work then I'm sure that's going to be a lot cheaper so that's something uh, we'll look at as well so uh, I'm just going to set it up now and um, well, we'll get started with it. Okay so I'm just going to go ahead here and get the Phantom ready to go. So here's my two CDs I have um, which we'll try out later, actually DVDs but uh, just a bit of blue tack, put it on the back off the controller and I don't know I, th I think it did it, I noticed when I tried it without and with it did go a little bit further maybe it was a fluke maybe not um, so that's what we'll try and test that a bit more and see if it really does actually improve uh, your range but you just blue tack it on like that you know a bit of force there you go sorted so Just make sure your batteries are fully charged, obviously. So when you're putting them on, you want to just let them spin. Uh, they should go on freely. Like that, until it starts to turn the main body here, and you're just going to want to Make sure they're tight, but not too tight. Direct the screws. I never get these right. There we go. And then just simply tighten. There we go. And then again, tighten. So, most people would use an iPad. Um, my iPad doesn't seem to work. Uh, I get a very like laggy signal. Um, and it's not very clear where I'm flying. Or, you know, so it's, it's a bit of a delay, so I just use my phone. Uh, which gives me the real time 720p quality, which is always good. Okay, one thing you'll need to take into consideration is where you're flying. Um, you need to make sure that you're not breaking any rules. So there is a gliding school just this direction, so I'm going to completely avoid it. There's also uh, McGilligan uh, firing range and prison out to the right here, so that's something I'm going to want to completely avoid. So I will be trying to head towards the mountains here. Um, it's a clear line of sight. You're always better to make sure you can see the Phantom. Um, I know you can watch it on your phone or your iPad, but if you can have a clear line of vision to where it's flying, it sort of helps. You know, if there's say a plane with a sweep past, you can uh, you know see that and make sure to avoid any issues uh, especially with large telephone poles as well that's something you really need to watch out for all right so that's me uh, ready to go all hooked up um, aircraft's warmed up so it's safe to fly so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it all the way out here and um, see how far we can fly obviously just keeping in mind uh, the battery and stuff the home point has been set so if I lose signal and it all fails it'll automatically come back to where it's situated at the minute um, so yeah we'll, we'll get started here and see what happens Five hundred and forty 
seven feet away from me. Okay, there I'm starting to get now at uh, near around 2,000 meters. Uh, starting to come up here weak image signal. Uh, so that's obviously now it's still flying, okay, but uh, the feedback that I'm getting the 720p display of where I'm actually flying is starting now to get weaker. So we're still going. 80% battery keeps popping up here in the weak image, but again, it's still going. I'm getting closer and closer to that mountain. Yeah, still got another 12 minutes of flight time, so all right, it's still getting the weak image. Yeah, traveling now around 35 mile an hour. Getting a lot closer to that mountain that is open. And I've actually just realized I haven't been recording this entire time on the DJI, so that's good. Okay, so really starting to get the weak, weak image now, it's not disappearing. Um, okay, we're starting to get a lot of green now, green's flashing on the screen, so I'm actually losing my image completely. Okay, so the aircraft is now being disconnected, so I'm no longer able to see where I'm flying, so there's a return home, so I'm going to press return home now, um, that should be it, there we go, I've now got my image back, so it's on its way back, I mean there was 10,664 feet away from me, uh, the aircraft is still disconnecting as it returns home. I did lose it there temporarily, but it's back. You can sort of see there on its way. Okay, I'm going to disengage the uh, return to home and bring it back myself. Uh, you can usually take it a lot quicker if you bring it home yourself. So it was traveling there and the return to home mode at around 21 miles an hour. Uh, I have it now. So we'll get up quicker. Straight ahead somewhere. Yeah, wind's really picking up now at the moment. It's coming up to three, just under 4,000 feet away from me. Uh, so I should be able to see it fairly soon. It's obviously actually drifted off. So it wasn't heading in the direction I thought it was. Um, it's over here somewhere now. I can hear it, um, but I can't see it. It's nearly, it should be more or less. There it is. It's directly above me now. Not directly above me, sorry. But it's up there. Um, about 500 feet off the ground here at the minute, so I'm just going to bring it down. You can see there on the Phantom uh, video, that's the wee cottage that we're staying in here at the minute. I don't actually live here, it's just down for a few days with the grandparents. So I have it set to warn me when the Phantom has around 30% battery, so that's that warning going now. Uh, you can hear it. Quite hard. Um, pretty much blends in with the clouds. Kind of a, an issue. You need to try and get it down as quick as you can. You kind of need to use your control to kind of fight it. Um, once you get there around this height, you want to just drop it, hold the hold the uh, down control straight to the floor. Once it lands, then it will obviously turn off the engines, as you've seen there. So yeah. All right. Well, that finishes that. That concludes this uh, video then, so two miles, very happy with that as a result. Obviously it'll be different uh, depending where you are, if you're in a built up area, um, 
or the likes of somewhere here which is just flat apart from the mountains in the distance. Um, so yeah that concludes this video. The next thing to do then will be test it and see if attaching CDs onto your Phantom controller does improve uh, the range at all. So uh, that'll be the next video so make sure and watch that. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, uh, found it maybe somewhat useful. But uh, until next time, I'll uh, see you later.